since more illegal immigrants are rushing the border, more kids are being separated from their parents and temporarily housed in what are essentially summer cramp camps, or as the San Diego Union Tribune described them today, as looking like basically boarding schools. Laura Ingram just revealed a piece of information so terrifying that it's supposed to be kept hidden from us all. The government is like crazy trying to figure out what to do now. This isn't just another news story. It's something that could change everything. Can you imagine what this last, most frightening confidential information could be? Let us uncover the truth behind Laura Ingram's shocking revelation that will change the U.S. forever. Biden's leadership under fire. Laura Ingram speaks with intense emotion as she talks about President Biden's recent actions, which she feels have thrown the country into a state of confusion and disorder. She mentions that Mitch McConnell's representative tried to dismiss concerns by saying Mitch was just temporarily overwhelmed and paused during a recent press conference. Laura points out that it's not surprising that leaders from other countries aren't taking Biden seriously because they see him as just a symbolic leader who doesn't actually control things. Laura suggests that if other countries want to get something from the United States or take more money from us, they should talk to people like John Kerry or Janet Yellen, or even directly to Biden's financial backers who have a lot of influence over trade deals with China and decisions on spending for never-ending conflicts. She describes Biden as a figurehead, a token, much like a character in the comedy movie Weekend at Bernie's, implying he is just being propped up without real authority. She recalls her time working for President Reagan and contrasts it with the current situation, noting that Reagan was disliked in Europe for representing a strong America, while Europe prefers America to be weaker so it can be more easily influenced. Laura criticizes Joe Biden for not being truthful about various small and big issues. She highlights that the U.S. government is about to start very important budget talks involving key figures, including Biden, Schumer, McConnell, McCarthy, and Hakeem Jeffries, who are either old or in their middle age, which she suggests might limit their ability to handle these important discussions effectively. She speaks with certainty as she analyzes the policies and decisions she believes are causing the current chaotic state. She praises an unnamed person for his wide range of skills and strong work ethic, even mentioning his new venture into hosting a cooking show, which she expects to be excellent. She brings up a past scandal where Biden was caught copying parts of a speech from Neil Kinnock, using it to illustrate Biden's ongoing issues with honesty. Laura argues that it's concerning that some key political figures are visibly struggling with their roles due to age and health, which affects their ability to manage the nation's crucial financial decisions. She feels sorry for their families, who continue to push them to stay in the public eye despite these challenges. She makes a pointed comment about Jill Biden, noting that she isn't qualified to diagnose the president's clear decline. Laura expresses her frustration with the constant dishonesty saying she could spend a whole hour on her show, The Ingram Angle, discussing these lies. She notes that since becoming president, Biden has told petty lies that are easy to check, like false statements about the price of gasoline. And the best is yet to come. Lastly, Laura argues that neither McConnell nor Biden are fit for their roles, considering their health issues and the controversies surrounding them especially Biden's alleged compromises due to foreign financial connections. She believes that being corrupt and mentally declining is a terrible combination. While she acknowledges McConnell's successes, particularly with Supreme Court nominations, she emphasizes that it's time for him to retire and enjoy his later years, reminding that his colleagues had compassionately suggested he step aside several weeks earlier. It's really shocking, and honestly, it's quite careless that no one has stepped up to address this issue, at least not that we're aware of. Laura Engel has repeatedly pointed out that the Democrats will only distance themselves from Biden if they start seeing him as a drawback to their political goals. So far, they haven't reached that point. In fact, they seem to prefer having someone like Biden as president because it's easier for them to guide his decisions. In the midst of all the political upheaval, Laura's sharp comments expose the damaging effects of poor leadership choices that have brought about so much uncertainty. When Biden first took office, 
the price of gas was just $2.39 per gallon. But then, mainly because of his policies that are against oil and gas industries, the price shot up to more than $5, something we all remember clearly. Also, Biden claims he cut down the national deficit by $1.7 trillion. But that's misleading because his big spending actually made the deficit bigger. Everyone knows that. His claims about the border situation are just as dubious. A recent Gallup poll shows that 70% of Americans, including 55% of Democrats, view the situation at the border as a crisis or a major crisis. Biden's approach of letting people in and not holding them has led to around 7 million illegal border crossings, according to a statement by a congressman. In just June alone, Customs and Border Protection reported encountering 144,000 people at the border. This has turned human smuggling into a lucrative business, making billions of dollars a year. While ordinary American families are losing hope, criminal organizations like drug cartels are thriving. However, the Republicans need to step up and not just let McConnell continue in his position without any opposition. Allowing him to carry on as he is now is not only unkind, but also stops the Republicans from using Biden's declining health as a critical point in the 2024 election campaign. Moreover, when it's time for the GOP Senate to choose McConnell's successor, they should pick someone who is not just another version of the same old establishment figures. They need someone fresh who can bring new ideas and not just follow in the same old footsteps. As Laura's criticism grows, let's learn about her past and what shaped her. From Reagan to Fox News. Laura Ingram was born on June 19, 1963, in Glastonbury, Connecticut. She has made a name for herself as a well-known conservative TV host and author, especially recognized for her show, The Ingram Angle, on Fox News Channel, which she started hosting in October 2017. Laura is also in charge of LifeZet, a conservative website she helped start. Laura grew up in a regular working-class family. Her mom worked as a waitress, and her dad ran a car wash. Her mom's parents came from Poland, while her dad had Irish and English ancestry. Laura finished high school at Glastonbury High in 1981, then went to Dartmouth College. She got her bachelor's degree in 1985 and decided to study law at the University of Virginia. There, she was an editor for the Virginia Law Review and got her law degree in 1991. After college, Laura started her career in politics. In the late 1980s, she wrote speeches for the Reagan administration. She later worked for Judge Ralph K. Winter Jr. at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit and then for Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. She also spent some time working at the New York law firm Skadden, Arps, Slate, Mogger, and Flom. In the mid-1990s, Laura shifted her focus to the media industry, appearing on channels like MSNBC, she became part of a group known as the Pundets, young conservative women who became popular during the Clinton-Lewinsky scandal. By 1996, she was a regular on TV, known for her sharp and sometimes controversial takes. Laura's own show on MSNBC, called Watch It, didn't last long, but it helped her make her mark as a conservative voice. She also hosted a radio show, The Laura Ingram Show, which drew a large audience and further boosted her profile. Laura is known for her strong views on topics like immigration, where she has used tough language and humor. For example, she has called the situation at the U.S.-Mexico border an invasion and expressed concerns about changes in Western demographics. Keep watching for more on this. She has written several books, starting with The Hillary Trap in 2000, which criticized Hillary Clinton's impact on women's issues. Her 2003 book, Shut Up and Sing, attacked celebrities and politicians she felt were undermining America, solidifying her position as a conservative commentator. Laura has been in the middle of several big controversies. She's been criticized for her comments defending the Trump administration's family separation policy at the border, which she likened to summer camps for kids. She has also supported the Great Replacement Theory, which suggests a conspiracy to change the demographic structure of Western countries through immigration. 
Despite these controversies, Laura has kept a strong fan base and remains an influential figure in conservative media. Her show on Fox News is still very popular, and she continues to shape public debate through her TV appearances, radio show, and books. In her personal life, Laura is a single mom to three adopted children, a daughter from Guatemala and two sons from Russia. She tends to keep her personal life private, but speaks openly about the joys and challenges of being a single parent. Laura's career shows how she's managed to stay relevant and influential in the fast-moving world of political media. From her early days as a speechwriter and law clerk to her current status as a leading conservative voice, she has always been at the forefront of discussions on important national issues. Her impact on conservative media and politics in the U.S. is significant, and she continues to play a key role in shaping conservative thought and policy. With her background clear, let's explore the main issues in the Republican Party. Future of the Republican Party Leaders should echo the common views within their party on issues like China, border control, reforming government deep-rooted problems, and trade matters. Recently, it's become clear that the core debates within the Republican Party are resolved, and there's no turning back to old ways from before 2005. Laura Ingram consistently brings up these points, pushing us to think about where the country is headed. However, her commentary suggests that current strategies don't really help the average Joe. They seem to only benefit the Biden family, while the regular worker falls behind. Soon, a big lie is expected to be revealed to everyone. In the latest news, Biden's Commerce Secretary, Gina Raimondo, went to Beijing, continuing the trend of high-ranking officials visiting China. This trip lasted four days and highlighted this administration's keen interest in working closely with the Chinese Communist Party, much more than with their own Republican counterparts. This approach seems to be setting the tone for the 2024 election. It looks like if Biden wins, it's seen as a win for democracy itself. Laura Ingram is putting a lot of effort into pointing out what she sees as the chaos in these policies, bravely tackling these complex issues. It seems like political figures are resigning left and right these days. Hunter Biden is having trouble keeping his lawyers. Yet another one just quit. What's happening here? We'll dive into that soon. Meanwhile, the Democrats face a real possibility of losing support from African-American voters, who they previously thought were solidly in their corner due to poor results under Democratic leadership. During her trip to Beijing, Raimondo set up new working groups and announced a tourism summit, which seems to have caught Ingram's special attention. However, if Trump manages to win by securing enough states, Ingram believes it would cause a huge shakeup in the system. She's calling for tougher laws in city centers, where violence mostly affects African Americans, while criticizing the Democrats' close relationship with teachers' unions, who strongly oppose school choice, leaving many minorities stuck in inadequate public schools. Is Biden going to ease up on his environmental policies and reduce energy costs? It doesn't seem likely. Despite several pressing issues, the answer remains no, and Democrats often dismiss Republican concerns by calling them racist instead of addressing the issues head on. When it comes to trade, despite the need for safeguards, Democrats appear to trust China more than their own Republican colleagues. According to some, the future of democracy now depends on getting enough mail-in and early votes to overcome grassroots popularity for other candidates. This strategy seems very calculated. In their desperation, Democrats are turning to complicated legal tactics and bizarre theories that twist the meaning of the Constitution. They avoid direct conversations on important issues. The term rigged election stirs up a lot of debates. This leads to a curious question. Should we also avoid phrases like trigger warning? Imagine the dilemma this would create for many liberals if such words were off limits. The media often plays a significant role in these discussions, particularly when it comes to racial issues. For instance, if an individual with extreme views threatens a judge who is black, 
Some media outlets might generalize this incident to suggest that all Trump supporters harbor racist sentiments. This notion was echoed by Eugene Robinson in the Washington Post, who stated that it was inevitable for the threats against public officials prosecuting Trump to escalate into outright violent and racial attacks. But that's not all. Robinson argues that showing support for Trump might be seen by some as akin to supporting deeply hateful acts, such as cross-burning, a symbol of severe racial hatred. On another front, the diplomatic efforts related to climate change, especially those involving John Kerry in China, are often mocked. Reports from sources like Politico commend China for its pledge to maintain regular dialogues, framing this as a crucial step in rebuilding trust. However, many view this as ludicrous, painting a picture of a misguided strategy. The criticism doesn't stop there. While the U.S. faces backlash for moving away from fossil fuels, China seems to face no such scrutiny as it continues to purchase oil from countries like Russia and Iran. This situation highlights a significant imbalance in global energy politics. China's actions suggest a clear strategy of securing energy resources to bolster its own economic and geopolitical strength. This sharp contrast raises concerns about the sincerity and effectiveness of global agreements on environmental issues and the real intentions behind the political maneuvers of world powers. After the political battles, let's look at President Biden's climate plans and their impact. Biden's new pollution controls. President Joe Biden is actively addressing climate change by promoting renewable energy and striving for environmental justice. His administration has undertaken several measures aimed at curbing the impacts of climate change, minimizing pollution, and fostering sustainable development. A major step has been the development of climate adaptation plans by over 20 federal agencies. These plans are designed to bolster the resilience of government operations and infrastructure against climate-related disruptions, such as severe weather events. The administration has dedicated more than $50 billion to enhance climate adaptation and resilience efforts nationwide. This investment is a component of Biden's broader agenda called Investing in America, which aligns climate resilience efforts with both public and private sector objectives. The updated strategies focus on minimizing climate risks to federal buildings, supply chains, and workforce and incorporating climate considerations into the day-to-day -day policies and operations of these agencies. The push for electric vehicles represents another significant endeavor. The Department of Transportation has approved plans from all 50 states to establish a comprehensive nationwide network of EV charging stations, supported by a $5 billion allocation from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Additionally, Tax incentives from the Inflation Reduction Act are set to increase EV sales and reduce emissions from the transportation sector. By encouraging the shift to electric vehicles, the government aims to slash emissions and transition to cleaner energy sources. On the front of renewable energy, the Department of the Interior has authorized projects capable of generating over 25 gigawatts of clean energy from solar, wind, and geothermal sources. These initiatives are crucial for achieving a pollution-free power sector by 2035. The administration has simplified the procedures for renewable energy projects and offered incentives for using American-made materials and labor. This strategy supports clean energy growth, creates jobs, and strengthens national energy security. Regulatory measures have also been intensified, especially by the Environmental Protection Agency, which has implemented new regulations to curb methane emissions from the oil and gas industry. Methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, will be significantly reduced through advanced technologies and effective solutions. These actions are expected to cut down on harmful emissions, enhance public health, and foster innovation in methane management technologies. The regulations aim to prevent methane leaks and mitigate health risks like respiratory issues and cancer in communities near oil and gas operations. Moreover, the administration has tightened regulations around air quality, particularly concerning chemical plants. New rules aim to lower emissions of harmful air pollutants, such as ethylene oxide and chloroprene, which have been linked to cancer and other serious health conditions. 
These regulations include mandates for continuous monitoring along the perimeters of these plants, enabling nearby communities to have better access to air quality data and protect their health more effectively. This effort ties into the broader Cancer Moonshot Initiative, which seeks to reduce cancer fatalities and enhance environmental justice for communities disproportionately affected by pollution. And there's more. Efforts to tackle wildfire risks and promote ecosystem restoration are also prominent. Significant funding from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law has been allocated to reduce wildfire risks and enhance natural carbon capture techniques like reforestation. These measures aim to store more carbon dioxide and safeguard communities from the escalating threat of wildfires. In addition to these efforts, the administration is boosting various clean energy and efficiency programs. The Inflation Reduction Act provides substantial tax credits for producing clean electricity, installing residential solar systems, and purchasing energy-efficient appliances. These incentives encourage a move away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy sources. The administration is also backing technologies that capture carbon directly from the air and secure it underground, further aiding in reducing carbon emissions. President Biden's environmental policies are comprehensive, aimed at combating climate change, advancing clean energy solutions, and promoting fairness in environmental impacts. Through substantial investments in climate resilience, support for renewable energy transitions, and stringent pollution controls, the administration is working towards a sustainable and fair future for all Americans. Is Laura Ingram exposing a genuine hidden truth, or is it just another sensational story? Tell us what you think, and remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing revelations.